Hello and welcome to Sir Fernbank Science Center's The Sky This Week for the end of March, the beginning of April 2021. We start the week with a full moon on Sunday the 28th. There are some bright planets in the early morning sky, getting easier to see those, and ending the week with some of the leftover winter stars. Get up early on the morning of Sunday, March 28th, 6.30 a.m. or so. The almost full moon is heading over toward the western part of the sky. If you're not sure about directions, wherever your observing spot is, if you put your left shoulder toward the direction where the sun appears to rise, that's east, then your nose will be pointing south. The full moon, almost, will be toward your right, toward the west. A couple of bright planets in the early morning sky as well, Jupiter and Saturn. Now those two, it's a bit deceiving, this image. They don't, in the real sky, they will not look like big blobs. They'll be tiny pinpoints of light, bright. Jupiter is pretty easy to see just before the sun comes up. Saturn, you might have to look a little bit to find that one. But bright stars and almost full moon to begin the week. Different months of the year have different names for the full moon. The indigenous peoples in our country had different names and different names for depending on where they lived in the United States. The full moon, we can see the entire lit up half of the moon. And in the northern part of the country, it was referred to as the crow moon. This was a time of year when crows were beginning to make a lot of noise as spring was coming and nest building was going on. The southern part of the country, we call it the worm moon. Thousands of years ago, when the glaciers were scraping all the topsoil off the northern part of our country, there weren't very many worms left. But here in the southern part, plenty of worms to leave their castings in the spring soil, and hence the tame worm moon. Checking in on Monday the 29th, 6.30 a.m., Jupiter and Saturn still visible over there toward the eastern part of the sky. The moon is just past full now, and it's in the middle of a constellation called Virgo, the maiden or the virgin. The just past full moon on Monday is right near one of Virgo's bright stars, the one called Spica. In mythology, this is a grain of wheat or a spear of wheat that the maiden is holding as she's up there in the sky. By Tuesday, in the evening sky, still facing south, there are some reddish things to look for. If the sky is clear, if the weather cooperates, find the planet Mars high in the southwest part of the sky. It's the first planet to appear after the sun goes down. And Mars is near two other reddish objects, stars in the evening sky. Zoom in a little closer, look at where they are. The three stars of Orion that make his belt, pretty easy to find. This bright star and this bright star and Mars are all pinkish colored. Aldebaran is the eye of Taurus the bull. There's a V-shape for his face, the Hyades. Two long horns sticking off this way. Mars has moved along its orbit quite a bit over the last few weeks. Used to be over here near Aldebaran. Now it's moved along a bit. The other bright star is in Orion the hunter, Betelgeuse, in his left shoulder. Those are all three bright high in the sky and sort of pinkish colored. Now look in the other direction. On the 31st or 29th this week, face the northern part of the sky. This time put your left shoulder toward the sunrise position. Your nose will be pointing north. And the, the pattern called the Big Dipper is pretty easy to find. It's large, the stars are fairly bright, the pattern looks a little bit like an old fashioned dipper with a cup and a long handle. And the two stars on the end of the Big Dipper's bowl point toward Polaris, the North Star. 
The North Star is on the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, a much dimmer pattern, harder to find, and the two stars that would be like pointers on the Big Dipper, that these two on the Little Dipper, tiny cup, little handle, North Star. Draw in some lines and names. That might help find them a little bit more easily. You can see that the Big Dipper is part of a constellation, Ursa Major, a big bear. This time of year, she's upside down. Her back is toward the ground. And the Little Dipper, part of Ursa Minor, and there's a curve of Draco dragon tail in between the two. If you notice, it looks like the two dippers are pouring into each other. Remember my mother saying, that's why it rains so much in the spring. The Big Dipper is pouring rain down onto the sky. Look a little more closely. And the Big Dipper pattern, four stars for the cup, three more for the bowl, for the handle. Look at that second star in the handle of the Big Dipper. You probably have good enough eyesight. Use binoculars if you need to. It's actually two stars close together, Alcor and Mizar. To the Arabs, they were the horse and rider. And they were sometimes used, so people say, as an eye test, eyesight test. If you could distinguish Mizar and Alcor in the center of the Big Dipper's handle, your eyes are good enough to go into battle. And Mizar actually was discovered to be a double star. So in 1650, first time a double star was seen through a telescope, that was Mizar. Years later, in 1889, the brighter of Mizar's two stars was discovered to also be a binary. And that was using a spectroscope, looking at the light and breaking it into its rainbow colors. Turns out the other star in Mizar is also a binary. So now that one little dot is actually four stars. And in 2009, two different groups of astronomers confirmed that Alcor is indeed a binary as well, again, using a spectroscope. Now we've got six stars all orbiting around each other in pairs, and it is, uh, the, to our eyes, just two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper. Now face toward the east on April 1st, no fooling. And you can find the Big Dipper once again. Here's where the handle is. Here's the bowl part. And we followed those two stars on the, the pointers toward Polaris over this way. Follow them in the opposite direction. And you run right into the head of Leo the Lion, a curve of stars called the Sickle triangle of stars for a tail back here. And in between the lion and the dipper are three tiny pairs of stars. To the Arabs, these were called the three leaps of the gazelle, that antelope-like creature. They said it was drinking from the watering hole here. And then the lion came and in three leaps, the gazelle ran away. By the end of the week, the moon has drifted along its orbit and is now a waning gibbous moon in the southeast part of the sky. And it's near another bright star, Antares, part of Scorpius, the scorpion. So there are lots of bright things kind of in a line here. Jupiter and Saturn, remember this is an exaggerated size. They're going to be little pin dots, but nice and bright. The waning gibbous moon and that bright star Antares, the heart of the scorpion. A long tail, they carry their tails curled up over their backs. Front of the scorpion, a couple of claws or pedipalps sticking off that way. And by the end of the week, looking toward the west, just after the sun has gone down, about nine o'clock or so, there's a whole collection of bright stars. These are the brightest stars we can see all year long. They're up in the winter for us. And as spring is coming, this whole collection of stars is drifting over toward the west. And in another month or so, 
they'll be behind the sun but well in the daytime sky we won't see them at all planet mars of course right there in the middle and if we start with the ones we know the three stars in a row for orion's belt by this time of year they find look like look like they're standing straight across betelgeuse that we saw earlier and rigel down by orion's knees the bright star sirius again exaggerated in size as you can tell it's really bright the star procyon that is part of the little dog the two gemini twins pollux and castor the bright star capella that's part of auriga the charioteer and back around to aldebaran so this big winter hexagon or circle of stars keep an eye on those they're going to be disappearing in a month or so and those are the bright stars easy to see in the early evening sky if you have a really good imagination you might even imagine the constellation pictures that go along with them orion with his bright belt shoulders and knees sirius in the big dog for Cyan and the little dog, the heads of the Gemini twins, Castor and Pollux, Auriga the charioteer, with Capella, the mother goat star and the little nanny goats, the face of Taurus the bull with Aldebaran, and back to Rigel in Orion. And as always, thanks very much for listening. Do come and visit our Facebook page with uh, planetarium programs on Friday evenings. Keep an eye on our website, www.fernbank.edu, and have a great week. <laughs>